Guest joining us, an international fitness model, guru, and trainer, Miss Deanna K. Fit of DeannaKFit.com, the inventor of Deanna K. Guru Fit Challenge. Also, will be joining us tonight. We'll be also hitting the hard hitting questions of hot topics. Don't forget, you can check us out each and every Tuesday night, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and every Sunday for Sunday service in conversation with Hollywood actors, directors, producers in conversation. Check, 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 one, two. There she is, ladies and gentlemen, in tonight inside the building. She is the lovely, the beautiful, the talented, the sexy, the one and only. If Jennifer Lopez and Kim Kardashian's oh booty were to come together, they would make Deanna Kay's booty come out live. So tonight, we're joining us in the building, ladies and gentlemen. She is the one and the only, the gentleman, the ladies, the one you love, the one you follow, the one you want to get all the tips from on how to get that beautiful body in shape for the summer. She is AMT Management's AMT Model Zone. The lovely, the sexy, the beautiful, the talented. Wow. Oh, so, oh, so, oh, so incredible. Miss Deanna Kay of DeannaKFit.com. Welcome to Hot Topic Celeb TV. Thank you so much. That was the most amazing intro I've ever had. You're welcome, sweetheart. You're welcome. So how are you? How, how are you? How are you holding up in this... Uh, this, I mean, obviously we've talked, but obviously how have you been holding up with the crazy pandemic and everything that's been taking place in the world? Honestly, like, I feel like this pandemic has been a blessing in disguise. As hard as it's been, it's also been so amazing to just experience life at such a slower pace and really look around and observe and just see you know, what has value to you and what really means something to you. And it's not just life in the fast lane. You actually have to slow down sometimes and really appreciate all that you have around you, whether it's your environment, your friends, your people, whatever. It's just, it's been a blessing. And don't get me wrong, it's been hard. And I understand a lot of people have been through a lot of things that have been difficult. And I respect everyone that they're trying to do that. But I feel like it's also been so amazing because we've been able to get through it and go through it. And it's been a collective thing. It's like, we're all going through the same thing together. And, you know, we're all growing, we're all getting through it, and hopefully we'll all get out of it soon. Well, before we get started, I want you to actually, since I'm, 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 I'm loving that you're showing the love, you're wearing a very special jersey. So I want you to show the yes. people. This is my G Tough One jersey. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, from the Tough yeah. One Mafia line. The, the, this is the only one out there, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're looking to get your hands on a little item like this, make sure you hit up the DMs, whatnot, on Tough One Mafia, and we'll get an order out to you. So tonight, before we get started, I want you to let the people who are just new to the world of knowing you, and, and, and they're going to get to know you tonight, I want you to first tell them first who you are, where you're from, and then we'll go from there. Wow. Okay, quite the intro. So obviously, my name is Deanna Kay. I'm originally from Iran, um, in a little city up north. I'm Kurdish, so the people of, like the Kurdish region are different from people of Iran. Um, and regardless, we ended up moving here into Canada and just growing up. I've been through so many different jobs and tried different things, but I always gravitated back towards the other Okay. I am getting into the industry because a passion turned into a profession, really. So for you, like, I know that you started off, you know, working in, I mean, what was your, was, was the fitness your first passion or what was the oh, first thing that you wanted to do? Oh, like in the beginning, when I first got out of high school, it was law and I wanted to pursue like the whole criminology and that whole aspect i was so intrigued by like serial killers and <laughs> things like what that. is women's obsession with serial killers but go on <laughs> it's like now we just have podcasts we have like so many different ways of finding more about it but back then it was wanting to get into criminology and really okay. studying and understanding like, time and stuff like that um but eventually i kind of got tired of it and i was like maybe i should try something else and an opportunity to become a flight attendant came up to do the schooling. So I was like, I'll just try it out and see how it goes. I was honestly just getting sick of the um, law and like the politic aspect of the criminology. So 
Yeah, I switched gears and then I ended up going into the school for a flight attendant. And after I was done, I was trying to get a job. And it was so hard to get a job here because so many people required experience. And obviously being somebody that was just new into it, it was hard to get into. So mm -hmm. I ended up moving, and I ended up moving into the Middle East. And I lived in northern Iraq. It's, again, a Kurdish region. And stay there to, well i went to initially to go visit and then i ended up staying there for about a year and got a job there as a flight attendant so <laughs> kind of i was there for the year and then it was amazing i got to experience the city the people i met met so many um amazing friends and had such amazing memories and it was probably one of the best times of my life and eventually when the whole isis thing happened it was like you have to like rush back you have to come home like Things are not safe there. So me and along everyone else, I feel like we all just left the country and mm -hmm. came here and I started the job as a flight attendant here because I already had like a year experience and it was easy to get into. And up until March, I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I know I, this is a question that, that's, that's going to be a hot topic. I mean, I, I, I've, mm -hmm. I've known friends, obviously, that are in the airline industry and especially... Yeah you know, when you are of, from the Middle Eastern countries. Since 9-11, yeah. obviously, you know, the world has, has somewhat become very judgmental and very, uh, what's the word, racist in, 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 yeah. in the aspect of how they treat people, how they are misinformed of people's backgrounds based on what they look like. And for you, like, obviously working in the the airline industry did you yeah. ever yourself being from iran being from middle eastern descent ever experience any bit of racism towards you in the industry or just in general um i feel like it was a lot of um i would say like a lot of sexist there more than racism especially when i was working in the middle east it was like how degraded you would feel as a woman was mm -hmm. nothing compared to how you feel. Well, here, like, obviously it happens, but to the extent of, like, how much it happened there, it's, like, night and day. I, for one, had, like, a very eye-opening experience being there and just felt like it was... Explain like, how. What, what was, what was eye-opening? Um, just the lack of respect for women, the lack of... Um, giving them fair rights or even looking at them fairly or treating them fairly. It was like, you're not even a woman. You're just a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it be just very disrespectful, very, don't get me wrong. It wasn't everyone. Obviously it wasn't everyone, but a majority of them were quite, yeah, not great. <laughs> so how, how do you, how do you, I mean, how did you deal with being a woman in those situations? I mean, like, and especially, working in the industry did you find it difficult for you to do your job or was it like something that you you know being over there prepared you to dealing with people and dealing with probably the rudest and crudest people type of people in that aspect yeah. for you like like what was your experience like, did, like how did you find this, that that journey for you i feel like it definitely taught me to stand up more for myself and you know, not let things slide, whether it's a young guy or an old guy or whatever, anyone. Um, you really go through experiences that really change you as a person and make you grow. And for me, it was that experience in, in itself was so eye opening because I went literally across the world mm -hmm. and left everything behind and just started a whole new life. And for me, that was the most. I don't know, come out of my comfort zone thing I've ever done. I had never done anything like that. But being able to experience that and being able to do that, it made me grow as a person so much and made me go from a little girl that was, you know, not even willing to do something like that to mm -hmm. wanting to experience a whole new world and a whole new life and just start fresh. Mm -hmm. and that's what I was going to do. And honestly, I might have even stayed. If the whole ISIS thing didn't happen, I feel like I could have stayed. I feel like the opportunities there and the money that was there really could have grown and could have become something big. Okay. Because, like, you know, the fitness industry here is so big now that mm -hmm. you're 
you don't really have a fair chance compared to somewhere there where it's so new and so fresh. Um, you have a chance and an opportunity to grow so much. But yeah. <laughs> your 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 bestie just just jumped into the room. Here. So hard for me to read. <laughs> Hi. What's up, Gulu? Miss Corona. <laughs> um, so for you, like, I mean, obviously working in that in that environment and having to, you know, travel the world and meet different people and meet different cultures and stuff like that. Do you? I mean, do you? Do you? Do you feel that um, there'll be any? There, there could be any change in retrospect to how the culture views women in the sense of going forward or you think it's always going to be yeah. that way i feel like with any culture and any any country like i feel like nowadays the younger generation is so much more aware you know they're more aware of their surroundings they're more aware of what's happening in the world technology i feel like has connected all of us so much that growing like eventually growing up and getting older and having all this information, you definitely make de like different decisions. Mm -hmm. I feel like with the way the world is changing and the way things are getting accepted more now, I feel like it could eventually get way better. Of mm -hmm. course. Whether it's in the Middle East, whether it's here, whether it's in America, like there's so much corruption, but I feel like as, as there are more, you know, generations growing and growing and, you know, more things happening in the world that are for the better, there's definitely possibility that things could get better and hopefully they will. So for you, like, obviously, like, after, you know, uh, going through that experience and then working in the travel industry and then, of course, you know, moving forward to 2020, 2019, yeah. everything changed due to the coronavirus. You know, mm -hmm. how, how was that for you, one, when you first realize because i mean i know you you made headline news of being in the news and getting caught on physical camera and you know in the height of everyone trying to figure out what the fuck this thing is oh yeah what was that ex what was that experience like for you and like how was that working into those conditions when you first realized that we're dealing yeah. with a pandemic the story behind Corona, like I wish I could. <laughs> I mean, I what was the story could. behind that photo? Be to begin. Well, <laughs> um, basically, what had happened was this was the beginning of Corona, like coming into Canada. I think there was one or two cases, and I was on a pairing with uh, one of my closest friends now. Her and her and I, we were talking about how it was getting crazy and it was getting scary and it was just blowing up, and we were just going from city to city. So we went down to um, Mexico and then we came back to Toronto. And as we came into Toronto, we're like, we have to make sure that we wear a mask. It wasn't even like the proper mask. It was just the white one and like. Mm -hmm. The, ugl <laughs> the like, ugliest one ever. <laughs> yeah, but we had it in the plane. We had a couple of our coworkers wear it and we decided to go through the airport with these masks. And obviously that's not part of our uniform, but we had to make sure we felt safe. So what mm -hmm. we did was, we put our mask on and we walk up 